Uh, thank you everyone for joining today. My name is Erin Remington. I'm curator at Saatchi Art and I'm joined by Aurora Garrison, also a curator at Saatchi Art. Um, welcome to our special preview of Masters of Eco Design, a new digital exhibition showcasing artists that focus on sustainable art practice, often using recycled and upcycled materials. So first, what is sustainable art? Sustainable art can be defined as art made by using sustainable materials and methods or art that encourages conversations on sustainability and the environment. Sustainable art can take on a variety of forms depending on the materials used and the purpose behind the piece. The artists highlighted today in this exhibition mostly focus on upcycling, which means that art that is created from materials previously deemed unusable or unwanted. This form of sustainable art has gained considerable traction in recent years, largely in part to the world's growing plastic problem. Artists are using materials that would otherwise be used in landfills to create their work. During this talk today, we will discuss the concept of upcycling within art and how it aligns within the larger conversation around sustainability and highlight several featured artists creating innovative, one-of-a-kind works worth adding to your collection. At a glance, it's easy to take an artwork's materials for granted, but today, however, across all areas of production and, cons and consumption, it's increasingly urgent to consider the environmental impact of materials. When it comes to art, more and more artists are taking the life cycle of their materials into account, making their art with an eye towards sustainability and protecting the natural world. This means using sustainable materials themselves or making art that consciously encourages conversations about pressing climate issues. Working sustainability also takes the one of a kind nature of art to a new level, given the nature of found and recycled materials when it comes to eco-friendly design. No two works of art will ever be alike and each is infused with its own unusual and intimate history. The artists in today's Masters of Eco Design, Art and Sustainability represent the vanguard of eco design producing the art from recycled and upcycled materials towards diverse conceptual and formal ends. Today, let's start with our first artist, Ana Montoya. Ana Montoya's delicate collages are made from everyday found objects and materials sourced from her immediate surroundings. Working with discarded plant and animal-based materials, her work connects with the natural patterns found in nature, from the repeating spines on a sea urchin to the concentric rings found in aged, aged trees. In 2009, Anna was awarded first place in the 11th International Textile Design Contest presented by Adabal. While studying textiles in the Amazonian region, Anna was a part of a project that aimed to provide women with a steady household income through craft. For Montoya, nature provides her with complex and beautiful forms. She likes to take natural elements and give them a human touch by collecting natural pieces to make different compositions. We can see the piece here titled Cycle on the left is a collage made of, made of bark from a plantain tree, plantain tree sorry, to serve as a reminder of the natural cycles of life. While burnt on the right is also a collage made from silk cocoons that have been slightly burnt with the flame. Okay, move on to our next artist. Oh, sorry, here we go. Uh, Marc uh, Sparful is a French sculptor who lives and works in Barcelona where he finds a limitless supply of the material used for his sculptures, that is um, scrap wood. In using discarded scrap wood, Mark endeavors to give life to mundane or forgotten objects and defy expectations or preconceived notions of what a fine, a fine art sculpture should be. Having grown up in the French countryside, Mark was struck by the buildup of scrap wood left on the streets of his adopted hometown uh, of Barcelona. The free and readily available material eventually found its way to his work, first in the form of masks and animal sculpt uh, sculptures constructed with chair legs and broken doorknobs. Mark has spent years experimenting with found materials like discarded wood, uh, culminating in his latest series of geometric abstra uh, abstracts shown here, um, which are exclusively available on Saatchi Art. 
Uh, this mini series is made up of the smallest wooden scraps he can find as he ensures that he never throws away any piece of wood. Um, he views the use of these discarded materials and scraps as an opportunity to stimulate his creativity and artistic process, but also work on a much uh, smaller scale. These are about 18 to 20 inches high. Uh, Mark is a conceptual artist in that his intention takes precedence over the finished product itself. This means that his hope of challenging people's assumptions about objects that are considered waste or unwanted is more important than the appearance of the finished uh, sculpture itself. As such, we can see why conceptual artists like Mark typically use everyday, everyday uh, materials and found objects in their art practice and have helped pioneer the sustainable art movement. And we'll move on to the next one. Great. Sorry, um, it keeps skipping. No problem. Another Barcelona artist um, is Abby Mackey. Um, she is Barcelona based, um, whose wall based sculptures are unified through a materials led methodology combining storytelling and social commentary. Reoccurring themes seen in her works can be identified as materialism, consumerism, value, and memory. Each series investigates the interconnectedness of these themes through the language of materials. Abby's works, uh, often created in Barcelona, tell the context of the entire homes or either, or sorry, the contents of entire homes are either thrown onto the streets or auctioned off upon death of a final occupant. The creation of Mackey's work is driven by the selection and repurposing of objects and textiles from these two practices in order to explore ongoing cultural concerns. This roots Mackey's artistic process in everyday existence of the unrecognized, uncelebrated, unknown lives of Barcelona residents. Another morning one portrayed here on the left is made from the deconstruction and recontextualizing of antique fabric. She will collect artifacts of a worn bed sheet, a stained tablecloth, or even a moth-eaten gown. The raw lived-in materials become simultaneously valuable in their uniqueness and worthless in their deteriorated, decontextualized state. While Between Salvation and Destruction too is also created from the deconstruction and recontextualized of domestic textiles sourced from local markets in Barcelona. Each piece is created from these objects and is therefore part of both the artist's personal expression of the hidden memories embedded in the original items and is also a way to explore the idea of recycling and recontextualizing of meaning and value in our contemporary society. Okay, our next artist is Carolina Maskwiz. She's a Polish artist that lives and works in Los Angeles. She crafts these small, delicate sculptures. I'll move on to the next so you can see. Um, sorry, she, uh, she crafts these small, delicate sculptures from wood found in the aftermath of the 2018 Woolsey fire, which destroyed more than 1,600 uh, structures and burned almost 97,000 acres in the Ventura and LA counties. Um, the fire started in Woolsey Canyon, hence the name, uh, and was propelled in large part by the Santa Ana winds and destroyed homes and caused the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of residents. Once the fire was out and the smoke had abated, Carolina explored the burned areas, gathering pieces of charred wood and began incorporating them into her ongoing series of kinetic sculptures like here. Um, the artist varnishes, sands, and paints the fragments of wood, connecting them with wiry appendages that evoke the mobiles of Alexander Calder. In some sculptures, Carolina almost restores the wood to its original finish, whether it was used uh, as part of a piece of furniture or a piece of a home structure. Um, in others, she leaves the surfaces rough and charred as though they were just taken from the wreckage. The small scale sculptures, again, these are about 20, um, only 20 or 25 inches wide, um, combine kinetic forms with natural materials like wood and stone, which you can see here. And they investigate the balance points, gravity, and the way the viewer's presence 
can influence the movement of the works themselves. A lot of Carolina's work is directly linked to LA and its um, environmental issues. The two sculptures shown here are from this Woolsey series and incorporate the charred wood gathered from the Malibu, from the Malibu um, fire ravaged area. The series is environmental in its concept, but also very personal to the artist as the art studio where she collected a lot of her materials was, um, was burned down in the Woolsey fire. These uh, sculptures move beyond typical themes of sustainable art in that they not only communicate the natural beauty of the Earth's, uh, Earth's resources and the materials she uses, but also deeply connect with viewers by remembering this devastatingly very real and very destructive event that so many can relate to, whether they're in California, Australia, or anywhere that is affected by fires pretty, um, pretty seasonally uh, can kind of understand this or can, can, find, a, fi can find great meaning uh, in, in her sculptures. I'll move on to the next. I like her works because it speaks to, you know, like natural disasters, but making something really beautiful out of it and kind of bringing, help bringing solutions to um, the global yes. crisis. After, um, after, after destruction and chaos, there can be beauty yeah. and rebirth. <laughs> yeah. And another LA artist um, wasn't done on purpose, Barcelona, Barcelona, then LA. I know, LA. I don't know how that happened either. <laughs> um, it's Kofi Effa. Um, he is born, um, born in Ghana, but now is based in Los Angeles. Um, he moved to the United States in 2010 um, in pursuit of his dreams of becoming both an artist and entrepreneur. Um, Effa is a mixed media artist working with repurposed buttons. Uh, he graduated with a degree in fine arts with a specialization in textiles and metal smithing. Um, you can go to the next slide actually. Uh, sewing is one of the oldest forms and practices um, known to man and, and Effa has found this to be uh, his form of self-expression in his art. He creates thought provoking and visceral viscerally stunning pieces through layering of colors and materials. He starts first by working on the background before integrating the sewing and buttons onto his pieces. He creates various patterns with the buttons on his canvases. Letter to my lover, which is seen on the right and alone on the left um, are both part of a collection where Effa works on a series of smaller canvases that capture snapshots of techniques and patterns he has developed on these are just about 11 by 14 um, smaller works. Um, they are in hopes of, of being something similar to a magnifying glass to create focus onto smaller um, pieces of his larger works. Uh, using repurposed materials such as individual buttons, he hopes to bring joy and fulfillment in his labor of love as he creates individually individually stitches to them to reveal a harmonious conglomeration of texture, colors, and sizes. Okay, I'm going to move on to our last artist, if it wants to go. Okay, uh, Swapna will be our last artist, uh, and she collects these discarded plastics that she individually hand cuts or carves um, to create marine inspired structures. And we'll, I'll show you the, there we go. Um, Swapna describes herself as a plastic sculptor whose mission is to create repurposed um, sculptural artworks using discarded plastics so that she can help raise awareness of the impact of plastics and other non-biodegradable wastes. Her upcycled plastic sculptures display an array of different techniques like poured oil paints, hand painting with acrylics, and sometimes even sewing with um, plastic wire. Swapna is extremely passionate about sustainable practices and building a greener future for, uh, for coming generations. Her sculptural artworks revolve around marine themes because our oceans are some of the environments most affected by plastic pollution. She considers her art a chance to spread awareness um, about plastic pollution and the importance of recycling, reducing, and reusing plastics. Marine wildlife is her favorite subject and she often focuses on creating unique textures and uh, brightly colored forms similar to those found in the ocean. Think sea anemones, <laughs> sorry, uh, sea urchins and stuff like that. In her latest series, 
a coral fluorescence, Swapna depicts the final stage of a coral reef. As ocean temperatures rise, the algae that feed on the coral reefs cannot survive. Major bleaching events occur with these extended height, uh, heat spikes, which cause corals to turn a ghostly white. Swapna chooses to portray a similar but different phenomenon called colorful bleaching, which has the opposite effect. Um, the dying corals gain more pigment and glow in neon shades of bright pink, purple, and orange. It's kind of like a, the, it's very interesting. It's like a SPF sunscreen that these um, coral reefs try to put on to protect themselves from the rising temperatures. Um, while beautiful, these colorful bleaching events are essentially a coral reef's last ditch effort uh, to survive and a call to action for people everywhere to do something about rising temperatures and plastic pollution. So um, again, these are quite small um, because they're just very delicate little, little creations. I love but, hearing the background of her works because once you see the, the examples, it really it like brings to life the narrative of um, what you're speaking about with the marine life and, and coral reef. Yeah, um, it hadn't quite occurred to me how heavily influenced she was by marine wildlife and the ocean until I had read that. And then I was like, oh, I see it everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, in conclusion, um, Across these various thematic approaches, um, I hope it, hope you can see that these are all uh, labor of love um, and within the sustainable art movement. Um, it poses an aesthetic challenge of the artists and serves as an exercise in seeing our environments and the products of them in new ways. While artists painstakingly collect and revive discarded items, viewers are called to look closely at these artworks to appreciate their materials and their transformations they propose natural versus built environments, temporality versus permanence, trash versus treasure. These artists are masters of this creative practice and as such lead the movement to live and create sustainably. Thank you.